Hi, how are you? Hope you're well. Before we get started, I have had a specific request from the love of my life, from the most wonderful person in the world, to give you all a message. My boyfriend would like me to tell you that this, this thing right here, this big boy, is his pride and joy. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little plant tour at the end of this video because he asked me to. So stay tuned for that at the end of this video. And again, specifically this bird of paradise right above me, this one right here, his pride and joy. But I will give you a plant tour of everything starting with this one. But today I am here because I filmed a tier ranking video just a little bit ago, a few days ago maybe or so, and I had so much fun doing it that I really just wanted to do it again. <laughs> So I've been racking my brain the past couple days and I thought it would be really fun to tier rank all of my five stars favorite books. I'm saying five stars, that's a little bit of clickbait because for me five stars doesn't necessarily mean a favorite and favorite doesn't necessarily mean five stars, but just five stars to make it easy for most people to understand. And you know, like I definitely have levels within my favorites as I'm sure many of you do. So I thought it'd be really fun to tier rank them with you guys. I'm very excited. These are really fun to do. I like completely get the trend. So let's head on over to my computer and tier rank my favorites. So here we are. Before we start the actual tier ranking list, I'm gonna go ahead and just go through all of the actual tiers really quickly. So the first tier is this green tier that is, there is a piece of my heart just for these books. So these are like top favorites have embedded themselves not only into my heart, but into my soul and into my personality. I sometimes go and look at my bookshelf just to see these books. There is no higher books than these. Next we have, I see the criticism, but I don't care. I wrote critique for just conciseness, but I see the critique, but I don't care. And that's kind of like, I can see how somebody would not like this book, but I simply disagree and think that if you don't like this book, you are wrong. You're allowed to not like it, but I think you're wrong. So that is the next tier. And then next we have the first orange tier, which is the Simply Meant A Lot. So these books are like their favorites because something about them either like really applied to me in my personal life or there is something that happened that I just really needed to read at the time. They meant a lot to me at the time. If I read them at a different time, I still would have loved them, but they probably wouldn't have been like a favorite. So these have like, these are favorites because of something emotional. Next we have a fave then, but not now. So these are books that when I read them, they were favorites of mine. But then if I were to read them now, they probably wouldn't be favorites anymore. I've, my taste has really grown since then. The red tier is invalid. Don't know why I put this as a favorite. I don't think it was a favorite. I think I was just confused. So these never should have made it into this list at all. Next, we have two blue tiers. The first blue tier is need to reread. So that is kind of like, I'm iffy on the stance. I don't really know if it is a favorite or if I wanted it to be a favorite or what. Like, I still think it's a great book and I still really love it, but I do need to reread it to really solidify where it is in this upper normal tier list. And then the very last one is childhood favorites and therefore they are exempt from this list, but I still wanted to rank them. And the reason is obviously I wouldn't love them as much now because I read them as a literal child. However, I'm not gonna bash them for that, but also like they can't be in any of the, like they're exempt because they just don't qualify compared to what I'm reading now because they're books for kids and I was a kid when I read them. So that is my tier list. And we're just gonna go ahead and get started. These are not in the order that I read them. However, I did try and group series and authors to together to make it a little more cohesive. I did learn from when I filmed the first one <laughs> a little bit ago. So the first that we have is the love hypothesis. And this one's pretty easy. It is going straight in. I see the critique. 
but I don't care. I really love this book. It brings me a lot of joy, a lot of happiness. This is one of those books that I read when I just want to experience those very vivid emotions that I felt when I was reading Wattpad fanfics. I can see why people don't like it. The fact that people have said that this is a Rilo fanfic kind of ruined it for me for a little bit there, but in general I simply do not care about the critique. It is a favorite and it will always be a favorite. Next we have Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood and I'm gonna be honest, I think this needs to be reread. When I read it the first time around, I really, really loved it, but then post reading it, I simply stopped thinking about it, like at all. And I remember what happens in the book, but like thinking back on it, I don't have the love for it that I do for other favorites. So I do think it needs to be reread, but it could also go in fave then, but not now. So that's where I'm at. Actually, we're gonna come back to love theoretically. I'm gonna let it sit there for a little bit. I'm gonna let it sit there for a little bit because I'm not sure. Next we have Shift. I think this needs to go and needs to be reread because I really enjoyed it when I read it. I read it after I listened to this twice and I just wanted the same vibes. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it, but I read it two years ago and since it is a contemporary romance, my taste has changed so much since reading this. I'm not sure where it would fall now, so I do think it needs to be reread and solidified. The Lucky List. This one simply meant a lot to me. I don't even really remember why, but there is just something about it when I read it. I really connected to it. And in general, the story is very, very sweet. It's a coming of age, coming out story about this girl like realizing that she likes girls and everything and it was just like I 10 out of 10 would recommend this to anyone. It is very sweet, it's YA and it's just it's very heartwarming. Truly, truly, truly. Next we have The Unhoneywinners and honestly, invalid. It would have been with a fave then, not now, but honestly, the more I think about it, I really only loved it that much because it was like the fifth book that I read. Like it was within the first five books that I read when I got back into reading. So trying to impress me <laughs> was not hard. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm so sorry. But trying to impress me wasn't hard and it takes place in Hawaii. Of course, I'm gonna love it. I love Hawaii. I think it's one of the most beautiful places in the world, even though I've never been. There's just a lot wrong with this book and honestly, the main reason why I think it's invalid is because the conflict of this book is so stupid and when I reread it in the summer of last year, I really truly like realize that the conflict is so bad. Like they broke up over the most invalid thing. She should not have gotten back together with him to be honest, because the like the fact that he didn't believe her and everything, like if you've read it, you know what I'm referring to, invalid, I'm sorry. It's not a bad book, but it does not deserve to be a favorite. That's like a three stars. Beach Read. Beach Read is difficult because it doesn't, it doesn't really fit with like top tier for me. Like I absolutely love Beach Read. It is probably one of, if not the best contemporary romance books that I have ever read. However, when I think about these books have a piece of my heart, I don't consider Beach Read as a part of it. However, like it doesn't fit with, I see the critique, but I don't care because there is no critique for it. Like everyone loves it. Like it's in a tier between those two and like that tier is only for beach read so i don't really know where to put it so this one is like really difficult for me i'm gonna put it with oh not with invalid i'm gonna put it with i see the critique you know what no There we go. This tier is for beach read only because it is between I see the critique and there is just a piece of my heart. So I made a tier simply only for beach read and that is where it goes because it's between the two. <laughs> So we're just gonna leave it at that. Next we have Happy Place. I really, really loved it, but because I listened to it and I realized this year that I can't really listen to Emily Henry books, like it's just not the same. I'm gonna put it with Need to Reread because I really do want to reread it physically before I truly like decide how I feel about it. However, I gave it five stars the first time around. So I it's it's a favorite and I love it, but it needs to be reread in order to fully be ranked. Next we have Love Struck by Rachel Wing and this is exempt because it's a childhood favorite. I read this like five times when I was like in my early early teens and it was the first romance book that I'd ever read and it truly was just perfect. 
I don't have, this is the copy that I had. I don't have it anymore. I really, really, really want to repurchase it. And then honestly, there's another one called Starcrossed by her that I also want to purchase. And I just want to read it because I wanted to reread it as a kid. And I never, never, ever found it at any stores. Just never found Starcrossed. So I really want to buy these two and just have them because I love them so dearly. Next, we have Sorcery of Thorns. And then we have Mystery of, of Thorn Manor, which both deserve to be up there. Sorcery of Thorns is the book that got me into reading fantasy. I remember <laughs> the day I bought this book. It like is ingrained into my mind. My boyfriend and I, we drove back from his family who lives about two hours away. So we slept over there at his grandma's house for some kind of holiday. It wasn't Christmas though. On the way back, I was like, I, I need new books and I don't know what to pick. I need you to pick books for me. So my boyfriend was like, yeah, it was like at sunset, but it was on like a cold cloudy day. We stopped, we went to the bookstore and I told him I really, really am in the mood for a fantasy. I've never read fantasy before, but I'm really in the mood for it. And then I'm also in the mood for a mystery thriller. So we went and he looked around and he picked two books for me. Sorcery of Thorns was obviously one of the ones that he picked for me. I said, no, he picked it out and he's like, I think you'd really, really like this. And I said, I don't know. It's in third person. I don't read third person. I don't think I'll like it. And he's like, just try it. Just don't be scared of it. Just pick it up. Try it. If you don't like it, it's not the end of the world. But I really, really think you should try it. I was so scared, but I was like, okay, fine. I'll pick it up. I'll try it. And I loved it so much. Like, reading this book is a core memory of mine. I want to reread it again, but like I, ne I need to mimic the setting of when I read this. It, this book is a core memory. Reading it, buying it, feeling it, everything about it is a core memory. The novella sequel is the perfect little just bonus epilogue. These books have a piece of my heart they always will. And then next we have Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson, which also just fully goes into that section. Like when I think of fairy tale fae books, this is one of the first ones that come to mind. That's the one thing about Margaret Rogerson too, just like side note, all of her books, they're all standalones and they're all so different from each other. It's like so amazing. So Enchantment of Ravens, it's a fairy tale. It truly, truly is just a fairy tale with like the more classic fae that like Holly Jackson, not Holly Jackson, Holly Black writes, where they're more animalistic like creatures. They're not Sarah J Moss superhuman fae. And truly it's a fairy tale. It is so good. And it has a very, very large chunk of my heart as well. Just anything by Margaret Rogerson in that tier. That being said though, next we have Vespertine and I wrote Sorcerer of Thorns, then Enchantment of Ravens, then Vespertine. I ran them back to back to back. And honestly, I need to reread Vespertine. I really, really, really enjoyed when I was reading it, but when I was reading it, I had gone back to the bookstore and I read the first chapter of Akatar, and I was just kind of hyper fixating on the fact that I wanted to read that. So my reading experience was a bit, not ruined, but I wasn't giving this my full attention the way I should have. So for that reason, I do think it will be in one of these top tiers. It'll either be in this one or this one. But for right now, I do need to reread it. I think I might want to make it one of my Halloween, Halloween reads this year. It's a really, really good book though. I just, I want to reread it and solidify my feelings for it because I didn't give it the attention that it deserved when I did read it. Not my problem. This book simply meant a lot. This is another one my boyfriend picked for me. And honestly, the way he introduced this book to me was a little off <laughs> offensive because he was in the bookstore. He bought me like five books for one of our anniversaries and he was in the bookstore and he saw this one. And the first thing is he looked at the cover and he thought it looked like me because it's a girl with curly brown hair and brown eyes. At least on the cover, it looks like she has brown eyes. I don't think she actually has brown eyes, but I like to pretend. And then he saw the title is not my problem and he read the back and it's basically about a girl who doesn't deal with her personal issues. She just puts them aside and he's like, oh, that's you. And I was like, first of all, I didn't need that today. Thank you. Is it me? Yes. Did I need to hear that? No, that was very rude. <laughs> But yeah, no, he literally picked this book because the character looked like me. The character's school uniform looks very similar to the school uniform that I wore. And then she doesn't deal with her problems and I 
have changed, but back then I didn't deal with my problems. So that's why he picked it out for me. We can all see it meant a lot. So was he correct? Unfortunately, that's nobody's business though. Am I still offended that that's the reason he picked this book? Yes. Yes, I am. Next, we have Never Lie. And I think this one's gonna go with I See the Critique, but I simply don't care. This is one of my favorite mystery thrillers. This is one of two, I think, that I've ever read and probably seen The Blossom. The House Across the Lake. This also goes in I See the Critique, but I simply don't care. In my original tier ranking video, I put The House Across the Lake in the top, top tier. It does not belong in the top, top tier. I love mystery thrillers, but they, they never belong in the top, top tier. I think the top, top tier is YA fantasy almost exclusively and then like half of B3. <laughs> but I really, really love both of them. They were really fun. The House Across the Lake specifically is a just go with it book, like don't think about it too hard, but they're really fun and if you're willing to just go with it, they're a really great read. Next we have The Midnight Library and I would have to say this simply meant a lot. If you've read it, you know what it's about. It's basically about a woman who commits an act that causes her to leave this mortal plane. And she goes to a library and she basically gets to try out a bunch of different lives. And the book meant a lot in the sense that I can see people's critique with it, but I just really enjoyed the whole aspect of like, yeah, like life's difficult, but here are all the reasons why it's still like beautiful and wonderful and why the life you have is like worth living, I guess you could say. I read this while I was going through it. I was at a difficult point in my life. So like this book, I just read it at the right time. So it was very meaningful to me, but I do see the criticism and why people don't like it either. So that's why it's in this tier. It's not a perfect book, but but if you just need a little like pick me up, I guess you could say it's a good book to read. However, it does have heavier topics. So definitely check trigger warnings before picking it up. Next we have A Court of Thorns and Roses. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm confused because for the longest time, they had a piece of my heart. They would have been in this top tier. And then I read The Ones Upon a Broken Heart and Carval Trilogy. And that kind of took over the love from that and the thing is some criticism has been said about this and now now that I've read some of the Throne of Glaw series I can see people's critique I simply don't care so it is also kind of like in this middle tier of like there's still a piece of my heart that has it but then also it's not like top top but I don't know you know what no because I can see myself rereading this and then completely like falling in love all over again with the series so I'm gonna put it in these own a piece of my heart however okay I'm gonna rank within some of the tiers so these are like dead lost in that there's a piece of my heart but like I'm I'm not going to punish them because I started to love other series more because I still really really do love them. I want to reread them so often so yeah okay I'm happy with that. Zombies Don't Cry. This is exempt because it's a childhood favorite. I actually just like found this in a random bookstore and this was the first time I'd read a book in like three days and that was like insane to me. I read a hundred pages a day with this book and that was like mind-bogglingly astonishing to me. Like I I didn't know anyone was humanly capable of doing that, let alone I. I really loved it. I was mad though, because tiny spoiler, it's a love triangle and the way that it ended, there's three books in the series, but the way that it ended, there was just like something about it that like rubbed me the wrong way. And for that reason, I, I couldn't, I couldn't finish the series. I was so angry. And also I had no like way of guessing the rest of the series. Next we have You Deserve Each Other. And I absolutely love this book so much. This is going straight to I see the critique but I don't care and the critique being my own from the first time that I read it. If you don't know what I'm referring to, I have a reading vlog that should be up by the time this is posted for you deserve each other and you should go watch that to know my opinion fully. But uh, the first time I read it, I had some thoughts, I had some gripes, there were some things I didn't like but then I finished it, I really liked it, I reread it, I still love it even more. This is just, it is so fun and funny and cute and just ridiculous. And it's just, it's the perfect little lighthearted winter coated rom-com. And I recommend it. Just don't take it seriously. That's my only 
disclaimer, do not take this book seriously. Next we have The Guest List. I think I'll put it with the other mystery thrillers of I See the Critique, but I don't care. It's just a really fun read. I liked it more the second time I read it because I remembered the wrong like person because it's one of those who done it and I remembered the wrong person. So I liked it more the second time around because I was so convinced. I was like, I remember this. I read it. And then it was a different person and it was just even more shocking because how did I guess it that wrong? But I don't think I'll ever reread this again. This is definitely not one of those mystery thrillers that you can reread. Most of them aren't, but yeah. It's a fun read, I do recommend it. Next we have the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy and also the Caraval trilogy, and I'm not going to bother even speaking about these. And please remember that these are tier ranked within the tiers-ish. Like all of these are fully top tier, like literally engraved into my soul, bury me with my books type of love. So the ranking within the tier really doesn't matter that much. It, more so matters to me, but top, 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 top tier, Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. And then we have Margie, Vespertine's probably gonna be in here or down here. And then we have Carval, and then we have Akatar. I really, really love all of these so much. Once Upon a Broken Heart, like I cannot consume media about it without wanting to reread it. Like I'm actually addicted. I've read the entire trilogy twice. And the first time I read it was like two months ago. So it's bad, I love it. Honestly, all of these books, by the end of my lifespan, I will probably have like consumed way too many times and that's okay. I'm personally all for rereading books. I want to allow myself to reread books more often because you should be able to do that. You shouldn't feel bad for choosing to read a book over and over and over again. I watch the same TV shows and movies over and over and over again. It's fun, it's comforting, it's warm, and I want to reread all of these books in this top green tier, in this bottom green tier. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until I can literally rewrite the book myself without even having to open a page. Sorry I didn't comment too much on like the actual Once Upon a Broken Heart and Carable Trilogy but there are two very long reading vlogs coming out for both of these where I give all of my thoughts and for my own mental health and well-being I don't think I can go over these books too many times because I will I will need to reread them and I'm I'm reading like three books books right now and it's I can deal with three books but it's just like I'm going I'm reading a lot right now and I just need to like not do that right now so I don't need to pick these up again but I love them so much it's green tier you can tell this green tier has my entire heart but the rest of them do as well just not nearly as much Okay, next we have My Roommate is a Vampire. This is going straight to I See the Critique, but I simply don't care. You cannot tell me that this is a bad book. I simply disagree. Do I see the points that the characters don't have that much chemistry? Yes. Do I agree with it? Yes. Does that impact me? No. My Roommate is a Vampire is one of the only books that had me not even laughing out loud, like cackling like actually like laughing till there's tears in my eyes having to like read quotes to my boyfriend type of like love and laughter so i don't care what you have to say about this book it is so funny that it will never be below this tier ever it is fun it is funny it is the perfect just awesome winter october read and i think i this will be a staple i think of like halloween i i'm very certain like i will be rereading it this year and if i'm ever in chicago during october you will you will not catch me not reading this that's all I'm gonna say. Next we have Bella, Donna, and Foxglove. These are actually the opposite of fave then, not now, which I didn't realize that I wouldn't have any books in this thing. So maybe I'm, I'm gonna have to like reconsider the tier list after I put everything in just to make sure, because I remember thinking of a book that's gonna go in this trope. But anyway, Belladonna and Foxglove. I'm going to put those with I see the critique, but I don't care both of them because, and here's the thing. I really, really love these books. The vibes are immaculate. The books, like the physical books, show the atmosphere of the story so perfectly. However, with both books, I very much struggle 
to physically read them. For both, I tried to physically read them and then I had to switch to audio because there is something about the writing that just doesn't click with me. That being said, I will I will be guessing the physical copy of Wisteria. You will not catch me not having that physical copy. But it just simply, there's something about the writing that doesn't click with me. It's a bit too slow, I want to say. Like these books, I cannot read quickly. I read them incredibly slow. Compared to other books, it takes me literally up to two weeks sometimes to read the first 100 to 150 pages, which if you compare that to Once Upon a Broken Heart, I for these, I could read like up to 200 plus pages in a day because it, it was just so easy to consume. So I really love them. The vibes are immaculate. I really, really, really enjoy the story. It's like this very historical gothic murder mystery fantasy type of vibe. That being said though, mostly given gothic historical fiction, like don't go into it expecting like main fantasy, main mystery thriller. It's mainly like a gothic historical fiction. But they're really, really fun. Vibes are immaculate. I just really, really struggle to read them and I can see why other people wouldn't like them because of how slow they feel. However, I do disagree if you don't like them because how can you not? you know? So I think they're worthy of the yellow tier and I assume Wisteria will probably be in this one as well once it comes out in August. I'm very excited for the trilogy to be done and to have like the story completed and I do recommend that you try it. However, the audiobooks are just amazing as well. They're fun so definitely pick them up. Next we have The House in the Cerulean Sea. I don't know where to put this one because when I finished it, it was up here but then then, like upon reflection it's like more in this category like I really really love it I just don't love it as much as I love any of these up here but I think I'm gonna do the same as Akatar and just put it at like the back because it really really is such a wonderful story it is perfect for like beginning or end of summer and you just want like a kind of contemporary fantasy is really heartwarming it's very sweet and i think it deserves all the love in the world and it's getting a sequel in september i'm so excited to read that and I also have Under the Whispering Door. I'm gonna read that in April. I'm very, very excited and I can't wait to get to it. I might even read it a bit earlier. It's considering where I am, it's really hot, so I might as well start reading it now, but I'm very excited for it. It's a really great book and I do recommend it. And then last but not least, we have Assistant to the Villain, which I think I also have a reading vlog coming for very soon. If, well, by the time this is up, it'll be up already. And that is gonna go with I See the Critique, but I simply do not care. I can see why people don't like it. There are some things that even I'm kind of like, like when I heard people's critique, this book genuinely got ruined for me for a little bit, but then I like sat down one day, I was looking at it and I thought to myself, they can have their opinions. I'm not gonna let their opinions ruin my opinion of this book. It is fun. It is silly. It is not meant to be taken seriously. It is just a joyride and that is why I love it. Like, I feel like so many people feel like romanticy needs to be more like serious kind of, I want to say like Throne of Gloss type of vibes because that is a serious fantasy, you know? But like Once Upon a Broken Heart, Assistant to the Villain, even kind of just some of Akatar, it can just be fun. It can just be unserious. Like fantasy doesn't have to be like this serious big plot Game of Thrones level stories. They can just be rom-coms but in a fantasy world and that's what assistant to the villain really is it's a rom-com just set in a fantasy world like instead of a dog it's a dragon you know it's just a fun little workplace romance at the end of the day and it's really fun and i don't want to let the critique ruin the story for me it's a fun book it's a good time the audiobook is so much fun to listen to the vibes again immaculate that's all there is to it at the end of the day so yeah, I'm gonna go through really quickly and rework the tier list and then I will be back because this is not meant to be empty. I remember there being something. So I went through, I would put this one with a fave then, but not now, but like at the end of the day, it did mean a lot to me when I read it. And I feel like this tier, like this tier is specifically for books that are favorites because I read them at the perfect time and they impacted me emotionally in some kind of way. So I'm not gonna move that one. I put the guest list with a fave then, not now because I really just I don't think about it like the reading experience especially the second time around was amazing but I don't think about this book on a daily basis like 
like this is like one of the lowest favorites that I have. I, would I recommend it? Yes. I would literally give my annotation book to people to borrow, which I don't lend out books because I don't trust other people to take care of my books the way that I would want them to. I would loan that one out with my annotations so that people can like see the funny comments and stuff. So I'm gonna say fave not then but not now. That being said, I still really enjoy the book. It's just not a favorite anymore, especially when I compare it to like Never Lie or The House Across the Lake. They were just more my style. I really love isolated mystery thrillers and this one is isolated but these are just even more you know? And then I was going to put originally before filming this, I was going to put Assistant to the Villain with Fave then but not now. But like I said, upon reflection, I'm not going to let other people's critiques ruin a book for me. Are their critiques valid? Yes, of course. I would never say someone's opinion is invalid, but I'm not going to let that stop me from liking a book. And I just watched a lot of people kind of shit on Assistant to the Villain for a little bit. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to shit on it. It's a fun book and it deserves to be ranked where it is. But to just quickly go through bottom to top through the tiers again. At the bottom we have childhood favorites. These are exempt and that would be Love Struck by Rachel Wing and Zombies Don't Cry. I don't own either of these anymore but I think I would literally buy them because I loved them so much as kids that I just want to have that physical copy. So maybe one day I'll get them. I don't know. I need to find where to buy them because I think you can only get these as used books. But I love them very much. In the need to reread, we have Love Theoretically, which honestly, fave then but not now. Like now that I'm seeing it, I really, really love it. It's a really, really good book. It's not the love hypothesis though. It's simply not. And I love Ali Hazelwood's work. That's still, I, I don't remember if I gave it a four or five star, but actually, Let's check. As you can see, I gave it five stars. I really enjoyed it and it's marked as a favorite because I have a little favorites thing. That being said though, like I said, I think it's more so just like a favorite at the time, not a favorite that sticks with me. And that is fine. That doesn't make these books invalid. Like I said, when I read the both of these, they were favorites. I loved them. I still really love them. I still agree with my thoughts back then, for me back then, but where I'm sitting right now, they just don't mean as much as they did when I read them and that's okay. Need to reread Shipped because that's kind of like in the same bracket that Love Theoretically was where it's like, I really, really loved it when I read it. I don't know if I would love it as much now, but I think it would always be a highly rated book. I think it would always be a book that I enjoy. It might not be a favorite anymore and that is fine. Next we have Happy Place. This one is only down here because I listened to it the first time around and like I've mentioned many times, I have learned last year that Emily Henry is not an author I can listen to. There are some authors that I almost exclusively read. There are some authors I almost exclusively listen to. She is someone that I just need to exclusively read. I call this in turn. Vespertine genuinely, I think, would be up here with the rest of Margaret Rogerson's work. The only reason she is down here right now is because I was hyper fixated on wanting to read Akatar when I was reading it and I didn't give Vespertine the attention and space that it deserved. So I want to reread it and give it that chance to like truly earn my love because I didn't give it the first time. Invalid, The Unhoneymooners, she shouldn't have gotten back with Ethan. The re like he didn't believe her. She told him something, he didn't believe her. And I think that's a bit irredeemable. If my partner said something like that to me, I would believe them. I would investigate. I would be like, what is going on? So Invalid, still a fun book though. The It's a great, great summer book. Definitely, I would recommend it. Just I personally don't think it should be a favorite at all for me. Next we have Fade Then But Not Now. Both of these just moved them into. Love Theoretically. Still love it. Still very good. Allie Hazelwood scratches an itch in my brain. She gives me those Wattpad vibes that sometimes you just crave. Sometimes you just want to go back to what you used to read. That's like me in the summer. In the summer I crave rom-com so badly but any other time of the year like I don't want to read contemporary romances. That's just how it is sometimes. So when I read it it was a favorite. It. Now upon reflection, it didn't impact me the same way the love hypothesis did, but I still really, really love it. I will still reread it. It's just not, it's just not in those top tiers, you know? Same with the guest list. I really enjoyed my experience with it. I will recommend it to anyone who listens. <laughs> it's just not currently a favorite anymore. Then in the, the Simply Meant A Lot, we have The Lucky List by Rachel Lippincott. We have Not My Problem and we have The Midnight Library. These, again, 
they mean a lot they are in my heart emotionally but if they didn't have that emotional connection they probably wouldn't be a favorite and that's okay that being said i do recommend all three but very much the first two the lucky list and all my problem they're both ya contemporary romances about gay girls and it's just so sweet and lovely and they deserve they truly do deserve to be in my favorites i will never not have them as a favorite next we have i see the critique but i don't care so again these is like i can see why other people don't love them as much as i do but i simply just disagree with their opinion and that is fine i'm not saying your opinion is wrong just to me it is <laughs> i'm joking but yeah like if you don't like it that's fine i just don't agree with you in that sense and that's that's the beauty of reading at the end of the day we all have our opinions and we all have our likes and dislikes and that's what makes it fun but yeah we have the love hypothesis we have Rita mcfadden's never lie which this is her best book like honestly read it thousands across the lake you deserve each other my roommate's a vampire belladonna foxglove i'm putting it right now wisteria is going to be right next to it and then assistant to the villain then we have a tier for beach read exclusively because at the end of the day contemporary romances just don't hit for me the same as fantasies do. If I ever do this again, honestly, I think that might be a for Emily Henry only tier because her books are like the only contemporary romances that I think are like top top tier nestled into my heart now. Like I said, at the point of reading that I am now, fantasies specifically, if you can't tell, why fantasies, they really just like they punch something into my heart that I can't explain, but it's just it, I, I can't explain it, but this is for beach read only because this is a perfect contemporary romance. Like if you want the guide to writing a perfect contemporary romance book, beach read. And honestly, I I genuinely think Happy Place is going to be up here soon. And then last, but most certainly not least, we have the top, top tier. There is a piece of my heart just for these books. And this one we do have tier ranked within the tiers. This is the only one where we did that. So it would be the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, then Sorcery of Thorns, Mystery of Thorn Manor, Enchantment of Ravens. I'm manifesting it right now. Vespertine's either going to be right before Carvel trilogy or right after the Carvel trilogy. But then we have Carvel. I really, really did love this one. Like the way I would describe all of Stephanie Garber's books is like this is like pink flowery fairy tale and this is like moody red and brown magic carnival vibes like even though there's not a carnival like those are the vibes that it gives but in a good way then we have the original akatar trilogy and then we have the house in the cerulean sea these books i'm obsessed with i genuinely go to my bookshelf just to like look at them and love them and stare at them and like let them know that i appreciate them as if they're sentient when they're not but to me they're sentient because that's how much I love them. I'm absolutely obsessed. I have so much just fan art saved on my book Instagram in like a little collection. I think almost each of these have probably have their own collection. I really, really, really love these. They're great. But in general, if you ever want to know what books I recommend to read, this tier list, this tier list. And if you are a kid or have a kid that is like 10 to 14-ish, childhood faves right there, go ahead. They're fun. They're dandy. Zombies don't cry. I think I'd love that now, to be honest, to be perfectly honest, because it's about a high school girl that gets hit by lightning and dies, but then turns into a zombie. And then she finds out there's like a secret society of zombies and it's like a little love story. It's fun. I should reread that actually. Ooh, that'd be a fun reading vlog. Let me know if you want me to make a mini series where I reread my childhood favorite books and then finish the books that I never got to but wanted to. So Love Struck and then Start Cross and then finishing the Zombies on Cry trilogy. Let me know if you want that because I would so do that. But yeah, if you ever want to know what books I recommend in this order from this video, there you go. Or just... <laughs> watch any of my reading vlogs and you'll know if I recommend it or not. But yes, these are really fun. So let me know if there are any other tier videos that you would like to see. I am so open to making them. This is a great time. I don't know why I've been filming for an hour. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little plant tour as promised at the end of this, but I'm gonna say my goodbyes now. So if you like me or my videos, I would really appreciate a like, comment, and 
and subscribe if you feel like it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye. Hi, hello, welcome to the plant tour. Pride and joy of my boyfriend. This is our bird of paradise. It's just named bird and that is a growing lamp so that it can get all of the sunlight. And yes, it is currently being held up by Pray by Michael Crichton because it is tilting. So it just simply falls down. But as you can see, it is giant. And then right next to it, we have our little hibiscus flower. It's very barren right now because we just trimmed the leaves. We don't want it to get too bushy. Normally it's a lot prettier and it's flowering. We have really bright pink flowers. I'll insert a picture here. And then next we have this little elephant named Willy. This is normally in our kitchen, but because our kitchen doesn't get a lot of sunlight, we moved it to the window so it can get more sunlight, which normally it does when the blind is open. Next we have our two little cacti. That is Billy Bob Joe and that is Orb. And then over here we have a ton of plumeria that also have their own little growing lamps. And now we're gonna move up this bookshelf over here. These are our succulents. So this one is Nemo and we named it Nemo because when we bought it, it only had one giant leaf and then three tiny ones. This weird looking one is called Boo. It has a little baby coming in and it's not dead. It's supposed to look like this apparently, but it's a, it's a weird looking succulent. And then over here, this is my pride and joy, and her name is Susie. She actually nearly drowned, but we saved her, and she's thriving, and I'm very happy that she's still alive. Over here, we have three more plumeria. Yes, we do have 17 plumeria trees, and no, we don't know what we're gonna do with them, but we're figuring it out. And now we're at my boyfriend's bookshelf, which has Goldie. It's called Goldie because its name is like golden something I don't remember. And this is what you normally see in the background of my videos, my boyfriend's beautiful bookshelf. And then we come over to my TBR shelf and ta-da! We have a Christmas cacti and it just started flowering for the first time ever. It's never flowered before, so it's very exciting. But yeah, that is the plant tour and this once again is my boyfriend's pride and joy that he wanted me to show you all.